Hello everyone, welcome back to the shed. I am Lonnie. Hey, good morning. Welcome back. I'm Candace. What's today? Wednesday, middle of the week. Yep, Wednesday, garbage day. <laughs> and uh yeah, we ha I have this saxophone out. It's taking a little closer look at it. Kind of been researching it. R really nice condition. It is a see the brand. We just bought it this past weekend. It's a buffet crampon. It's it, a, uh, like a student entry level saxophone, yeah. but I mean, they're still not cheap. No, they're not cheap at all. It, it's a high quality beginner sax. It is. And, um, it, I, she said, the lady said she paid 800 for it. I believe her. Yeah. That sounds about in line with what it should cost brand new. Um, look, doing a little research. I think we can get 300 because our can... We've seen some that have sold for two fifty that have like that had like rust around the bell here. Yeah, yeah, yeah and our, ours is in great condition. I mean, it has a few scratches. You can see uh, evidence of it being used, but the the pads all look nice and supple. Mm -hmm. They feel good. They look good. Yep. Um, yeah, everything looks good on this thing. So we're gonna get this listed after we film this intro thing. It may take a little while to sell because just being towards the end of the school year. You never know though. There might be like a, a music like somebody might have lost theirs or broke it or something and need another one. Or or like rental companies, music companies nationwide, they are renting these things out all the time. True. And if they if one of them saw an opportunity to buy one good condition in yeah. good condition and then rent it out for 20 25 a month later or a school you know? maybe looking for one just to have on hand true true although i would I, I imagine they probably don't buy them they probably get donated i always wondered about that yeah i yeah why would they buy them because all yeah. the students yeah i don't know but uh or they, they you know what they might even get uh schools might get them donated by the like music and arts does business with Molly's school, they might give them a free instrument every now and then. Right, if they have so many rentals come through. Like just a little an kickback. An incentive, yeah. You know? Maybe so. Just to have extra instruments on yeah. hand. Um, but we did want to cover a question. I was a little leery of co of talking about this, but I I think it's worth being discussed. It's been a long time. This is not news or anything. Why don't you go ahead and read the question, Candace? Okay. And this is gonna this is gonna make some people very angry and some I don't know. We'll see. All right. The question is from Ken S. Doesn't it bother you when China can send up to two pounds via e-packet rate for about the price or less that it would cost you to ship that item across the street? It seems like the U.S. government allows this and enables Chinese sellers to scam users as it costs way more to ship the item back to China. Makes you wonder why the taxpayer subsidizes this. You always thought it was crazy, like you can order something for like five bucks and a two dollar shipping from China, you know? Or no, I've, I've seen plenty of times where you can order stuff for like three, four or five dollars and it's free, free shipping. Free shipping, yeah. Which means if it's free shipping, then that means that they're paying, they gotta be paying less than a buck. Yeah, I could never, figure that out or i didn't know how they were doing that well there, there is a magic way they're doing it lonnie did a little research yeah and i've all i've known about this for a long time i try not to think about it too much because it is it's a little infuriating and um i do want to preface this conversation with saying that i do not blame china for this at all right. i do not blame chinese resellers like chinese resellers they are just like me and candace Except they happen to be born in China. Yeah. That's the only difference. Yeah. They're human beings trying to make a living and sell stuff just like we are. So I I, I, I don't have any an, uh, animosity towards them at all. Why would I? Yeah. That would be like, they're the same as us. Now, the, the, thing, that, the thing that Ken is talking about, well, he said can send up to two pounds. It's actually not two pounds, Ken. It's up to two kilos, which is 4.4 pounds. So it's even worse than it's, it's worse yeah <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> and it's it's true let me read the rest of this question uh it seems like the u.s government allows this it it doesn't just seem like the u.s government allows this back in 2011 i'll put a i'll put a screenshot of this agreement here back in 2011 um we did postal service initiates e-packet service with hong kong post 
New solution adds visibility to lightweight package shipments. Uh, that visibility, of course, is for Chinese sellers. It's a one-way kind of thing, really. So, Chinese government and U.S. government both agreed to subsidize these lightweight shipments from China into the United States. Uh, making it very, very, very cheap for Chinese sellers to sell uh, small items to the United States. Now, if you return that item, you don't get the same postage rate. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, like, let, let me just give y'all an example. I, I mean, there, there's countless examples of this. Here is a listing that is using that, right? So this is like a computer board, right? Like a microcontroller board. And you can buy one of these for $5.57 and you get free they call it speed pack but it's going to be some version of e-packet mm -hmm. shipping free shipping for this for 557 and these are made over there so they have that competitive advantage right the chinese labor is way 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 cheaper than it is in the united states they don't have the same standard of living that we do here so they have that competitive advantage. And then, not only all that, they can ship this thing for nearly free to us. Yeah. So, yeah, the, Ken is absolutely right. Um, somebody across, somebody a mile away from me uh, would have no chance, even though they're that close, even if I went and picked it up, really, but they would have no chance of competing with that seller. No, zero chance just because of the shipping alone. Yeah, that's how much the shipping by itself would be. Right, and yeah. it, like if we, that is a very small lightweight thing. Yeah. So if we have one of those and we wanted to sell it to someone in China, well, I'd probably whip this thing out. Half pound, rest of world. It would be, it would cost us $12. And that's at a, that's at a pirate ship, simple export rate. It would cost us $12 just to ship that little thing. So that didn't include cost of goods or making a profit or anything. Mm -mm. And yeah, so, and again, I don't blame the Chinese. I do not blame the Chinese for this. This was an agreement. Y'all need, y'all can read this. Um, they, they, the way they looked at China at this point was a, like a developing developing country or something like that so they wanted to give them give them a little help give them a little help yeah but uh let's see hong kong includes jointly developed data rich shipping labels i thought this was interesting joining vogel today for a ceremony to formalize the agreement where eddie mack deputy postmaster general of hong kong post and jeff Liao, ceo of ebay greater china so ebay was at the table yeah. eBay was at the table and probably had a lot to do with getting this pushing deal this, done. Yeah, pushing this deal. So it ultimately it was our government, our post office that signed this deal. Mm -hmm. But eBay was at the table yeah, they making had their hand in it. <laughs> making this deal happen. Yeah. I I never knew that until I'd read this question. I'm like, "Well, let me do a little research so I'm not totally you know winging it here and i was shocked to see to see ebay in the official uh pr release from from that from 2011. what's even worse though is that not only are we subsidizing that postage we're subsidizing it in more ways than one right the post office is going to try to get their money so whenever you see postal increases on like the postage we pay, like to, to ship something to say Colorado or something like that, right? A, a part of that postage you're paying is to make up for the money they're losing by having to deliver these e-packets for free. Right. So we are ultimately paying for our Chinese competition to make markets where we have zero chance of competing anymore so candace what do you think uh, i don't like it <laughs> you don't i don't think it's fair that you know and the in the big picture that we're having to compensate for them to ship items over here you know what's really bad though is the fact that i think a lot of a lot of people like i've, I've seen plenty of people complain about this over the years and for good reason and i feel like 
of all the things China does, right, that we don't like, this one ain't on them. No. This is not on them. No, this is our postal service doing this. We we do this to ourselves. Yep. We did this, or our representatives did this. Right. I think if you put this up for referendum, I don't know, the general public might, people like cheap stuff. But how many people know about this? How many people are like me? They're like, how are they doing that? And they don't dig deeper. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Most they don't know. Yeah. They don't know. And I wonder how many deals there are like this where we screw ourselves that we don't know about. We know about this because we're in that industry. Right. How many other deals are there in other industries that are similar to this that we don't even know about? Right. Where we're screwing ourselves. And what, what could have been our motivation to make that deal? Like I see what China gets out of it. Yeah. What is what are we getting out of it? Because like the example you showed, we're not manufacturing those here, so no, no. they gotta come over here anyway. Right. You know? No, yeah. So if people need them, they're gonna pay the shipping. Right. So yeah, they would just be paying more. They can't run out to Walmart and just get one that nope. Walmart made, you know. Nope. I mean the other way it would happen, like it would be your traditional, like that thing I showed, like the microcontroller thing. Right. It, it, there would be a container full. Somebody would buy a whole container of those things. They would be imported on a container ship, mm -hmm. and then United States sellers would add on their their pro, their margins and then ship them out via normal U.S. Post Service. Yeah, and that's a way around that whole thing. So. Yeah, it it does it it does make me mad. It makes me mad at our own government. Um, it it does make me wonder if I don't know. Like I I can't find the motivation for the United States to do that. And I'm sure there's more to it than we know, like trade like, agreements or whatever. Yeah. Or maybe uh, corruption and bribery and yeah. under the table kickbacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> eBay, eBay, did y'all do this? <laughs> did y'all? How much did y'all pay for that eBay? Right. eBay Hong Kong. <laughs> but no, it does make me mad. Um, Chinese sellers to, and, and they also mentioned enables Chinese sellers to scam users, as it costs way more to ship the item back to China. In my and I know there is some of that that goes on. And I mean, if you buy something on eBay, though, and you do, uh, I know there's other, like Facebook is really bad. Mm -hmm. I've got, I've had Chinese sellers try and screw me on Facebook before. Oh, yeah. So I don't, I mean, there's all, Facebook is the wild, wild west right now as far as, you know, Facebook marketplace. Mm -hmm. But on uh, eBay, you're, you're pretty well protected on eBay. If a Chinese seller tries to scam you, you just do item not as described, and right. they're no. they're going to refund you and tell you to keep it. Right. That's what they're going to do. Because they don't want to pay that shipping back. No, they can't, right. and they know you're not going to. Right. And you don't have to. Right. So and I, and again, this is nothing against Chinese people at all. Nothing. Nothing. The only the, as I said, if I was, I could have been just as easily, or actually, it was. It's more likely that both of us would have been born in China than here. <laughs> By so, the odds, yeah. Right. I mean, there's a lot more Chinese people, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's nothing against them. And e even the Chinese government that signed the deal. You can't blame the table, them. That's a great deal. Of course yeah. they signed it. Yeah. How would they, why would they not sign that deal? Yeah. So, I blame us. <laughs> I blame our government and whoever else is involved with that. And yes, I am angry and now I'm mad. Thank you very much. Great way to start the day. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to pull some orders? <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and, and ship Let's them ship out. Ship some orders out. <laughs> yeah, we got to keep the Chinese. Uh, we got to keep those Chinese resellers in their cheap postage by buying postage to subsidize it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. All right, Candace, got orders to pull. Let's yeah, do it. Let's get rolling. Pretty decent little sales day yesterday. Yep. Uh, Walmart pin first item two sixty seven. Two six seven. It's a foot. It's a foot. These have just been really, really steady, haven't they? Yep. 267. It's a foot. The 10 foot rule. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about. A 10 foot rule. Does that mean you have. 
I don't Maybe know. when they have electric like trucks or whatever or or forklifts. Oh, maybe I don't so. Know. I'm just reaching. I don't know what else it could be. Hmm. Because okay. I think that came out pre-COVID. <laughs> somebody tell us if you uh, either work work or worked at Walmart or know somebody that did. What is ten foot rule? Yeah. Is this something we need to have in the shed? It might be kind of hard and hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of us would have to work outside. Yeah. I'm not moving my bench over here to the back of the shed. Well, that sold for $8. Okay. Next item, it says one Charlie yellow bag. It's for Popo figures. Popo. One Charlie? Yeah. I do see a yellow bag. Why is it in a like a? What is this? I just wanted to keep them all together, and I guess I didn't have any bags big enough for them. We never time. store anything like that. Well, well I'm not going to ship made it. Made it easy to find. Look, he cut his way out. Look at that <laughs> <laughs> sword! He cut his way out of there. Oh gosh! Man, I wonder when that happened. Good thing we sold him. They tell him what would have happened. He oh, once he got out. He might have attacked us while we were listing one day. <laughs> Those sold for twenty-eight dollars. Okay, where did we get these? Do you remember? I think that was in a guy box. Okay. Okay. All right, we sold a Girl Scout patch, pocket twenty-eight. Yeah, one of those ones you just listed, right? Yeah, scribe. Twenty-eight. <laughs> you got all those listed already? That sold for thirteen dollars and forty nine cents. Yeah, it's got a feather and an ink well. Yeah. Molly actually earned that badge last Did she? year. Yeah. All right. What do you have to do? Just like write stuff? Yeah, write up like a. Uh, they did an autobiography, like a short autobiography, you know. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, and the cube, the alarm control panel. Oh yeah. This is kind of surprising. I didn't think it was going to sell that fast. It is a new old stock. It's right here. New old stock, uh, a Demco alarm control panel. I had no, like, there's so many gems. Yeah, like, why would somebody want that? Maybe if they have that one. Yeah, It might have been is. a really popular one, and it's easier just to replace than yeah. to put a new system in. Yeah. So when I was looking at that, like, that's the thing about bulk buys, as long as it's not all just junk. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of stuff that we're donating, but then it, we find a lot of stuff like this. It's like, oh, wow, look. Something we would have walked right by at a garage sale, honestly. Mm, maybe. I, I would have. I probably, I might have, I might have I looked this say, up. I would say, oh, it's an alarm panel, okay. I would have probably looked at it and said, oh, that's pretty old. Yeah. So that's all for $40. Ten, uh, not ten, two Charlie Sennhauser receiver. Yeah, that's for a microphone. And I didn't want to get the power supply, and even if I did get the power supply, I would have had to have some transmitters for this thing to, or some uh, micro, some wireless mics or whatever to test it with. So, That's I, a, so you sold it as is. I just sold it as is. Thirty-six dollars, six Charlie, vintage verbatim diskettes. Ah, ten of them. Six Charlie. Here we go. These were the, that was the first brand of diskettes that I used when I was a kid. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was sixth grade. Apple had an Apple IIe that I used. And we were all, like, handed out the beginning of the semester. We were all handed out our ver, verbatim mm -hmm. uh, branded floppy disks to put our assignments on and stuff. Yeah. Those sold for $15. All right, the next order has five items on it. Um, we did a little... No, four, huh? Uh, yeah, what did I say? Five. Oh. <laughs> I'm looking at the four. Okay, the first thing on three Bravo is the um, Cinderella Castle silhouette. The Disney Castle. Yeah. This thing. This thing is cool. We only found one sold for this. Yeah, it's, it's made by Hallmark and it's pretty rare. Yeah, it is rare. Like we couldn't, actually, we didn't find more solds because nobody was buying them. We found we didn't find any more souls because there were none others none available yeah. yeah there were none available that's right 
And then I know the other thing. One Bravo, Mary Poppins. Yep. We know, I know what's on the order already because this stuff is all on the same order, obviously, and it is going to, I need another hand. I'm good, I got it. And it is going to um, Canada. So we had to get it all out. Well, the two bigger items anyway, weigh it. I think we just made another sale on eBay. We'll get it all out, weigh it, and then figure out how much the uh, shipping was gonna be because, you know, we'll combine it. The next two items are American Girl. Um, the first one is a, a dress and shoes, five Echo dash A4. Which way should I go? That way, it's probably in a little container. Okay. Five Echo. This says B, this says A. I'm gonna guess it's in A. And we need A4. Is it like a, a leopard print or something? Yeah. Okay, I got it. And what's the other thing? Six Echo dash A1. Six Echo A1. Oh, so back over here. One day I'll learn where everything is in here. Okay, we have to move well, this like. unlisted in. No, that doesn't make any sense. No. It's, it's in probably in the same place I just left, I huh? <laughs> All right, let me go look. A1, it's a pair of boots with butterflies. Yeah. <laughs> Here they are. I was looking right at them, didn't know it. There they are. All right, so all this stuff right here is going to Canada. And that all together came to $86.96. Yes, we just sold some dog clippers. Some who? Dog clippers. Oh, yeah, good. Heck yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get those out today too. Okay. Uh, CC8 baseball glove. Rawlings, 12 inch. Yep, CC8, that's one I just listed. Seven, eight, five, five. Yeah, the baseball stuff is selling fast because of the time of year. Yeah, this is, we bought two gloves for $5 this past weekend. Yep. So I have 250 into this. So that sold for $20. Okay. MU8 Polaroid film, or yeah, I guess you call it film. MU8 drawer. Oh, behind me. <laughs> One day I'll figure out where everything is in here. Is it a six? Well, 600, yeah. 600 plus. That's all for $10. Alrighty. I think we had like four, four of these. Let's keep going. I'm gonna, maybe we can pull everything. Okay. Three Charlie is one of the books I listed yesterday. General George B. McClellan. Yeah, and we do have we do have intentions to clear all my junk off of it, at least this next shelf down, so we can. Yeah, I'd like to keep that shelf all cookbook. I know, I, I agree. That's all for ten dollars. I'll get it done by the end of 2024, if not sooner. Speaking of cookbooks, six Bravo. This is a good one. Roger's holiday cookbook. Yeah, that is a good one. It's so good. Candace bagged it. I did. It's over $54. <laughs> uh, man. We need to find... If y'all are local, if you're local and you didn't know about buying this book before before you saw it on this channel, then just let us buy them all. Y'all buy something else. Or you have to give us royalties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Nine Echo. We have a Frankie Stein. Nine Echo. Down that aisle. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> you look lost again. <laughs> Nine Echo. Hey, there's exactly the exact number that I need in there. That little, huh? that little bucket made another one? A little magic magic bucket. <laughs> uh, that's over 15. Okay. Pocket 41, NES, not NES. Game Boy? DS. DS, okay. 
football Madden 09. Which one is it? Matt, oh, pocket 41 Madden 09. Man, why would I put it in that pocket? That's a hard to get to pocket. I think it was actually up towards the front and I flipped it around and put those back. Well, that makes in sense. Uh, Man No Nine, got it. $13. Okay. To Delta, the dog clippers. Oh, okay. That's the thing that just sold. Yeah. That was another little gem from the KND buy to Charlie Delta. Here we go. It's something to look out for. Uh, these are Oster. Oster? Oster? What? Is it Oster or Oster? I don't know. Uh, what are they called? Professional Golden A5. Yeah, Golden A5. They're like really, here, I'll show you. Real they're quick. like professional quality. Yeah, they're heavy duty, like, feel, feel how heavy. Oh, wow. Yeah, and they run quiet. Yeah. Like, wait, hang on, let me, let me plug them in. So watch, this is low. Kind of whispers, huh? Yeah. It's not like, you know? That's high. And I'm you sure- me, You want me to give you a trim? I could use one. <laughs> those sold for 45. Yep, and those, uh, I didn't think they were gonna be much whenever when we saw them at the uh, yeah. K and D buy. I'm like, they're just dog clippers, what's so, the deal? The, the buy is, I would say the buy is working out a little better than I was hoping. Oh yeah, there's been quite a few gems. Yeah. Now we do have a Mercari order. Do you want to go ahead and pull it? Yeah, might as well. All right, it's a Dracula RC and it sold for thirty dollars. All right. It's funny. We started off so slow selling this stuff and now we have two platforms where we're just moving these dolls. It's exactly yeah. what we needed. Yeah. Really is. Cuz like we have we're getting real close to break even on the the uh Monster High stuff. We looked at it uh yesterday and Yeah, we're getting there. We we're, we're probably right at break even if you don't account for the eBay fees right. and and Macari fees. Right. So we probably have to sell a little more to cover the fees and then we'll be in the black on that whole deal. And we have a whole bunch of dolls left. Yeah, and they're, they're still selling pretty steadily, so. Yeah, Candace has to, you gotta get another Draculaura up, huh? I got a rig go over there. Oh, that's the, that's the next one in the uh, chamber, huh? Yeah, she's waiting on me. Okay. Come on, let's go. <laughs> All right, well, I'm, these people are waiting on their stuff, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff packed. All right, y'all, this is quite a few days later and uh, I'm editing the video you're watching now. It's kind of an inception thing. And guess what? After this clip, I didn't have a closer. I had no closing clip. I had no goodbye. So this is me telling you goodbye. Thanks a bunch for watching y'all. And we will see you again very soon. Bye.